Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. This is the second video about a game between Wild or Dog and Free of Me. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about a position in the middle game where Black has an opportunity to attack. So let's just start by looking at the moves up to that point. In the first video about this game, I talked about the, the Avalanche Joseki. So if you're interested in that video, there is a link in the description and you will find the link somewhere on the screen. So this attachment against the lower right corner was an AI type of move. Uh, Black could have played a normal approach, but this was not necessarily bad. This way of reducing Black's Moyo has actually been played for a few centuries at least. And so it's a fairly popular move, although I haven't seen AIs suggesting this move very much. And here Black captures the one stone on the side, taking away White's eye space. So this is a valid way for Black to continue the attack. And it is this position in the middle game where I felt that Black had ideas for how to attack White. Um, so I'm going to be talking about some positional ideas as well as tactical things in the local position. So from here on, we'll take a look at the game and its as it proceeds. And then it will continue with me doing a review of the game after they finished. All right, so I think at this point, I'm thinking either jump out or maybe I can probably scramble for life. It's not like a massive right. hurry. Okay. So one I, of the things here um, that I would be thinking about, um, you have to decide what, what you're giving to Black. Like when you're invading your opponent's area, um, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're sort of greedy and you want to invade everything, um, then you can get into a lot of trouble. But if you have parts of that area that you're going to give to your opponent, then it's a lot easier to find the right move. So like, for instance, yeah. uh, how do you feel about the right side at this point? Um, I'm not too worried about that, I think. I think if he makes points there, I can make points um, on my end. Right. We can trade that. So like, but... if you, you're feeling okay with the idea of giving the right side to black, yeah. Then the the quickest way to settle your group is to play forcing moves against it. Okay. Huh. So okay, so I, I could like make another um a little bit of eye or eye shape of um playing like O eighteen or something like that and then making an eye like that or I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think I might play away at the moment. Maybe it's a bad idea. I think my idea is either M6 or F16. M6 or F16. Yeah. yeah, those are both good points. Okay, yeah. I think maybe M6 is a little bigger. I don't know. Thanks for following Lewis, Defender of Communism. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the gifted sub to Soul of Departure. Much appreciated. Great. Right. So, White. Okay, thinks... so White's played away. Yes, White um, thinks he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. And oh, yeah, there's a key point, a kind of a, a shape move that I. Um, I sort of want you to try to find. Okay. If I go there, he goes there. <laughs> well, a square shape inside would be dead. And if I play N15 and he Hanes, I can cut. So that even if he captured those two stones, he would still have a dead 
shape, which means he, if if he wants to live, he's still going to have to run, which still allows me to make a wall on this side where I could then possibly attack his right side or split his right side. The other option, of course, is to do a peep, and maybe that's the safer way. Um, but if I do a peep, then I, well, I have to extend that stone one more time because I don't want him to make a Well, then he's got to attempt to kill. I go here, he goes there, I go here. He goes there, I go here, he goes there, I go there, he goes there. Okay, so, uh-huh. Hmm. It looks like Black is trying to sacrifice two stones. Yeah. Now, the way to sacrifice the stones is important. Uh -huh. That's because I don't want him to have a second eye. Wow. Oh. That looks a bit unreasonable. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were doing so well there. <laughs> I'm free. Uh... Okay, so at that point, like if Black had played an Atari from the outside, uh -huh. And ultimately, White would have been able to live, but Black would have gotten a, a nice wall on the outside, and it would be good enough. So here, you're trying to kill it, but you're sort of pushing White outside at the same time. So it makes it really difficult in the execution. Uh, so I'm not looking at all. Of, I obviously didn't look at all of White's possibilities for responding to that Atari. Yeah, that's not the first time I've done that. I can see. Okay. Change of plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> when it doesn't work out, it's a good change of plan. Uh... So yeah, just look at, around the whole board and look for areas like groups that seem to be um, seem to be weak, groups that seem to be weak, or areas that are wide open. So like when you when you think you've made a mistake locally. Uh -huh. You, um, there's kind of a tendency to sort of dwell on that area uh, and want to continue to fix the mistake somehow by adding stones to it, and that's usually a bad idea. So there's uh, it's, uh, pretty good if you, you think you lost some stones locally or messed up or got caught in a misreading something uh, miscalculation. Actually, quite often the best thing for you to do is to play away and find find some other part of the board to start again. And you just you just described exactly what I do wrong is I get so uh, pardon the pun okay. attached I get attached yeah. to this this group that I screwed up on that I just spend so much time there and I've chased dragons all the way across the board <laughs> and lost the game because of it. Okay, so. So although although F sixteen is a big move, I think because of like you say, White has the potential to have this huge this huge space along this ten line. This this space in here, if White gets this, that would be really bad. Um, so and obviously the only White weak group I see of White now that I've let the uh, dragon out of the box. The only weak group really is these four stones here. So this 
he allows him to extend. I think what he would really like to do is extend and make that second eye. So I'm going to take that away from him. Good. Don't. Oh well, yeah, that reasoning was actually um, pretty good. Thanks. Well, I did have a little. The coaching helped <laughs> to make me have a different perspective on not have a 6K perspective and a hey, chase the dragon that is out of the box. The whole thing with moving out at N15 and giving white two stones, um, it was a bit too fancy. <laughs> I'm trying to do too much here. So it would have been okay just to simply play a peep from the outside. At this point, so before white gets a chance to do something else, you want to do it right now. And if white plays here, then that's that's still a full size. So like when you chase white like this, um, white doesn't have very much in the way of eye shape. Otherwise, if white answers like this, then you get an extra forcing move. So like um, you could play here, um, and white still has to make the second die. So. The object here is not really to kill white, but you do get to squeeze white to a certain degree. So this would be great. It's just sort of painful for white to be playing so many moves just to capture the one black stone. So like just making white inefficient like that. Um, so like it would be something like this and white would be able to live, um, but then you could, and you can see a, a black area developing there on the right side of the board. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah, so you jumped. And yeah, so here I was talking about how when you're playing with white, um, the fact that white is coming into black's area um, and has a local disadvantage means that white has to be very clear about what areas you're going to give to black and what areas you're going to try to live in. And obviously, white is sort of committed to living with this group on the top. It means that it's okay to play moves like this and um, reinforce black because you, you probably you won't have an opportunity to go into the right side anyway when white has this weak group on the top side. So if white just plays this one exchange, it's going to make it very easy for white to live there. So that exchange, um, that's why I wanted, one of the reasons I wanted black to play this immediately okay. because when white plays this exchange, it gives white a lot of space there. If black plays a hunting against it, it just means that white's going to get an extra forcing move because now black needs another move there. Um, so it just gives white, um, white's getting some space anyway. So this yeah. was a move that I um, would have liked to see white playing. It would have made a big difference to how happy white is uh, locally. When the game white played away, locally, um, just looking at the overall board position, this knight's move at m6 is a very important point. So it's it's a point that um, that should be sort of bugging you throughout the game. It's a point that is, is worth looking at. Um, the problem is that when black plays here, uh, white's going to be squeezed pretty badly. So yeah, you could just play here. And I think it would be OK just to, to finish the wall and allow white to live on a small scale. So this would it would actually be very difficult for black to kill this white group. Uh, because if you play here um, and this variation, there's some danger of Black's position just pulling apart. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So there's that weakness in the Knight's move, uh, these two stones, the connection there is not perfect. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's something you have to be sort of careful of. Could and you just... Probably... Um... Yes? Could could you just uh, instead of double hunting, just do P nineteen or is that P nineteen is yeah. going to be bad because it's um, it's not oh it's not unconditional okay. oh because of the coat right okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah so yeah um, and actually it's this is really an interesting position because it might look like black is sacrificing two stones. But this is actually an opportunity for white to sacrifice two stones. So if white had played here, mm -hmm. I'm yeah, black has to connect, right? Like it, it, this would be a bit unreasonable. It would be 
um, there would be this hole here. Um, I, I doubt that this is going to work for black. So let's let's say that black is going to connect, and white just connects it. So in this case, black is sort of committed to take the two stones, and white would play here, and would have great shape on the outside. Hmm. Yeah. So this this would have been very easy for white, and so sometimes you um, sort of have to turn things around like that and sacrifice two stones when you th when you thought your opponent was sacrificing two stones. So in this case, when black plays here, um, maybe white's going to connect, and black plays here. So in this variation, it's, it's back to this one, and black can afford to let white live. So this would be back. Uh, back to a good variation for black, where you should be happy just to let white to do that, and then you can play here. And just just imagine something like the game that ha the game variation that happened after this, where you were chasing white in this direction, white was trying to get out in this direction. Isn't this a lot better to have a solid wall here? Yes, it, it's, it's work. It's going to work a lot better. And so white, white's going to be in trouble if white gets in the same variation as white did in the game. Yeah, so yeah, so that was a bit greedy. So like it was um, the cutting move here. Trying to kill. Trying to kill is always very dangerous. Like it, maybe it's more fun, but you know, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's more dangerous sometimes. It's not as if you're professional players. So you don't have to play the correct move always. Yeah, so here... Um, yeah, so yeah, this is a point where it's actually very dangerous for white, um, and it's sort of tricky. So the easy move for black would be just to connect here. I think I, I saw you sort of hovering over that for a moment. Yeah. You were thinking of playing there. And it would have been better to do it this time, right? This, this would have, um, connected to the corner. The fact that you didn't connect to the corner, it did create a lot of potential problems. It sort of restricted your playing later on. So for instance, this move, um, in the game it was working fairly well, but for instance, what if white pushes through here? I would say you've played the knight's move you probably want to cover, right. in which case white can cut. Sending along the side, soul of departure. Yeah, black does want to sort of um, put pressure on the white group. Um, so that was soul of departure asking. I suppose he means something like yeah, this. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So in this case, like it, in a position like this, if white plays here, um, this is pretty threatening against the corner. So like if white plays both of these points, black is going to be squeezed in the corner. So like in this case, you can live there. But the fact that moves like this are going to be forcing, um, it does reduce your territory. It also gives white some space for eyes when white does something like this. So white would have no trouble with this group. So not only is this move making your stones safe, it's also big as far as territory is concerned. And it's actually taking away um, the move that white plays there. Uh, so for instance, this this kind of play is a process that is giving white eyes. So it actually functions to take away white's eyes if you play here, so to a certain degree. It makes it more difficult for white to make eyes just because moves like this, now they're not gonna have any effect at all on black. So it um, makes blacks that much stronger. 